Good morning, guys. Man, am I sad. It's a sad day. You know, it's it's gloomy. Gloomy as crap, really. Uh, rained overnight. It's getting cold. Leaves are starting to fall off the trees here in High Point, North Carolina. <sighs> and today is the day that we say goodbye to our 2021 Thor Coleman 19 CM project that really turned out to be a lot more of an endeavor uh, than I had originally planned. So I guess, uh, shout out to our buyer um, for challenging me, kind of taking me out of my comfort zone and uh, you know, giving me this really, really tiny canvas to work with when it comes to uh, what would normally be required for, for uh, such a project. So getting right into it, I won't belabor that too much. Uh, Victron Orion DC-DC 50 amp, uh, it's the Orion, Orion XS. Terminal fuse, 60 amp, okay? So we're gonna go tip to tail here. 60 amp to some four gauge cable. You see uh, winch wiring and stuff. Your DC-DC uh, charger is all braided. So I have all your, your, your uh, wiring braided because it does pass through the chassis down by some hot stuff and that kind of thing. So you wanna make sure that all that is protected in either uh, braided covering or, or plastic wire loom, which we've also used on the battery cables throughout the installation, of course. Um, so 60 amp Orion is, uh, or, or the 50 amp Orion is fused to 60 amps at the starter battery. <clears throat> Check this out. So here's what it's about at Peak Pounder. Can anybody tell me that this thing has undergone a completely transformative surgery to lithium ion or lithium iron phosphate, I should say. All right, so let me yank this, uh, yank this seat cover out here, or it's the uh, seat back, I should say. And uh, you guys saw this already, but you didn't see it put back together. Vatcher 460 amp hour. Uh, Courtesy of Atcher, we'll go through some of that stuff here in just a minute. Like I said, Orion 50 amp, it's your DC DC charger, fused on a uh, four gauge cable. Oh, coming from the battery uh, here, another terminal fuse, 60 amp, 460 amp hours. All right, so what does that mean? Well, let's take a look. So, right now, by the way, this is a Victron Touch 50. Okay, right now we're absorption charging. We are absorption charging. We're pulling in 34 amps to get this thing back to uh, back to 100%. You can see we got 95 watts, 9900 watts of DC load, 14 watts of AC. Uh, no alternator wattage right now because the DC charger is obviously not working because the vehicle's not running. And then because we're on shore power, we're pulling all this from the grid. All right, 30 second time out on the screen, by the way. But that's just a screen. What about the brains? So the brains are run on USB extenders. We grab a light. Should get another take and there was no light. So USB extenders, can hardly see any of that. And an HDMI extender up to the servo. So the servo is in this protected place, dry, cool, that is where all of your monitoring, really all of your computer control for the system, for the inverter, everything runs back to. That is what enables our awesome Touch 50 up here. Okay. Gonna go ahead and pull this drawer out. So we just kind of utilized uh, the factory wiring locations. We we tidied up some of this, but man, you know some of these uh, some of these RV companies they just sort of throw stuff in here. But we tied up, so you can see some white and red posts uh, or white and red cables back there in the background. That's your factory uh, DC feed from the existing battery from the well from the previously existing battery. Um, we just pulled those off the lugs and then repurposed the existing lugs. That's the easiest way to do it. And what it really does is it kind of makes, well, the whole thing, the whole package is really designed to be uh, removable. You know, if you trade the thing in or whatever the case may be, uh, the idea is that, uh, you know, everything can be kind of jerked out fairly easily, fill some holes. Uh, you maybe have to make accommodations for some of the uh, 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 high visibility items like our 
giant 400 amp capable uh, power switch here. But for the most part, rip this thing out, put it in your new rig, whatever the case may be. Uh, what we found is, uh, well, let me take, let me take you guys out there and show you. I hate to be, uh, I hate to sound so disoriented and discombobulated. It's just a lot to get through. I'm trying to work you guys through my process and sometimes my process is just crazy. So heart of the unit, Victron Multi Plus, or, or I should say heart of the conversion, right? Victron Multi Plus 2. It's a 3000 watt, like I mentioned in the previous video, 120 amp, 110, uh, I mean, a uh, uh, 12 volt, obviously in, in out. Uh, via two dedicated battery feeds. This is one alt, also known as zero gauge, uh, to your DC terminals behind the uh, behind the grill here. Uh, here are your battery cables. There's also one alt uh, coming in from that uh, monster Vatra battery. Here is your neg for your DC charger and obviously neg for a battery cable, uh, all tied to a Victron Smart Shunt. So all this is, is manageable via, via Bluetooth, via the VRM online portal, or obviously via the uh, Touch, 50, uh, Touch 50 display. Master disconnect, right, this kills everything. Uh, all wired to the smart shunt, and then all wired uh, directly to the Lynx distributor. If you are building a lithium conversion, and you are still using bus bars and uh, fuse holders and all this old school stuff, stop, stop. Use the Lynx distributor. As long as you're using Victron stuff, I mean, yeah, I didn't use the Lynx shunt with this one, so we don't get the power light, we don't get the fuse blown status, but guess what? You're gonna know pretty quick if you got a fuse blown. Anyway, uh, this combines both of those functions, fuse holder and uh, bus bar into one unit. It's about the same price once you factor in the cost of making additional jumper cables uh, and then buying the, uh, the, the fuse block and bus bar themselves. Uh, just do this. Just, just do the links. <laughs> so, we, so anyway, that's enough of that. Uh, uh, like I said, two independent battery feeds to your inverter, um, or from, from your inverter, I should say. Uh, this goes to your DC uh, power on your uh, power panel inside, your fuse panel, if you will. Load center, I think some people call it. Uh, we have your, your power and neg for your uh, servo, which is the brain that we talked about. And then 10-gauge uh, uh, Romax 10-2, uh, nothing, nothing crazy. What we did find, let me take a swallow of Coke real quick. What we did find is, uh, it, well, you know, if you guys look at the specs, you'll see that uh, the Multi Plus is supposed to have 100, 100 millimeters of clearance uh, on all four sides. Well, it should be pretty clear that that ain't this. Oh, by the way, check out the diamond plate. I mean, I love this. I love this matte diamond plate. It's a nice solid surface that is um, really, I think, better at, uh, at, at, at housing this thing, having it sit on it than, than the factory, uh, factory wood was. It just looks uh, a little tougher. I, I think that uh, the appearance is, is uh, really something. Uh, this was all perfect before, by the way. So I just, I just took a really good factory, uh, factory Thor uh, cupboard floor and uh, covered it in diamond plate, but I think the look works. Anyway, there's no getting around that this is a tiny space. Positive airflow is the answer. So you guys can't hear that because we're on a different mic, but uh, we have fresh air being pulled in here and then hot air being exhausted here. Okay, this is just exhausting back up into the galley. So uh, in, in a way, it's sort of being recirculated, and I'll show you what I mean by that here in just a second. We did have to blow these two holes, and of course, they're uh, backfilled with spray foam and then secured into place as well. Uh, those, you, you know, that kind of goes along with my, uh, it can almost be put back to factory, as long as uh, your new buyer doesn't mind having an uh, eight inch and a four inch hole uh, cut out for fans. Okay. So stepping back up, we threw this vent in, you know, this all looks, this all looks pretty much factory to me. I think it probably, probably does to y'all too, but we threw this vent in to pull uh, cool air from the floor uh, and it works flawlessly. So we probably, we dropped peak temps in that cabinet by about 15 to 20 degrees uh, when the thing is bolt charging and, and absorption charging. That's when the uh, inverter is generating the most heat and by using the, uh, by using sort of this airflow system, um, it, uh, 
it, it, it really has made a, a big difference. So definitely do that if you're working in the confines of such a tiny, tiny space. <laughs> so right now we have uh, the uh, fridge working on gas, okay? So we can see that because our battery is at 100%, we're only drawing five amps or 76 uh, watts, which really has, um, you know, it's driving your, all your lights that I have on in here. The inverter itself definitely uh, draws a little bit of power, but even so, if you can see that, four days and six, <laughs> four days and six hours on a single charge. Uh, no solar or anything in this, but uh, you do get 60 amps from the battery, uh, From I'm sorry, from the alternator, uh, and then of course your power and uh, generator. Um, float charge and grid, so we're plugged in. All right. So let's change that. Just gonna come around here. Go ahead and yank that. I'm gonna leave this factory 100 amp. Uh, oh, it's not the factory 100 amp, but it's you know the, the battery that we were using just as kind of a bonus for our guy. Why not, right? Merry Christmas in October, or whatever. All right, so owning 4,000. All right, so we're off of shore power. Let's take it back in. Oh, let's prove we're off of shore power. So you now see that instead of mains on and float, we have inverter on. So everything's being inverted. Totally seamless. That's, that's the beautiful thing about this is that it's just, it's perfect. It's, it's, there's no, no indication that anything is going on other than regular power being delivered. So now when we come back to the Touch 50, we can see inverting and we can see, hopefully you can see that discharging, grid disconnected. All right, so what I'm gonna do, I'll put the AC back on uh, I'm sorry, the refrigerator back on AC. All right, once that moves over, well, it's already done it. So now you can see our AC loads has jumped to 170, 187 watts, 186 watts. You can also see that we're pulling a solid 20 amp. So I don't care who you are, you know, if, if uh, you want to run your AC on an inverter, I would highly advise, even with a 3,000, 3,000 watt house like the, uh, Multi plus, I would highly advise moving your refrigerator to gas, even with the soft start. So we threw a soft start on the AC uh, just to kind of stutter the starter motor and reduce that uh, compressor surge upon startup that you know also settles down once the once the thing is running. Um, but now, so we've moved our fridge back to gas. Come over here, see that that's reflected. Your AC watts have now dropped to 18. Check out this AC. So right now, I just jumped that thing to low fan, high fan. Now we're gonna go low cool and high cool. And you can see that we're only drawing 30 amps. Waiting on this compressor to kick on. Now, I have the temperature setting here. This is gonna keep the thing about 70, 72 inside. This is ideal for boondocking. Uh, uh, you know, instead of blasting the damn thing as hard as it'll go, we're gonna go ahead and turn that down just wait on the compressor to kick on. The compressor kicked on. And now, come back to our panel, and you can see that all of a sudden we're pulling near 100 amps of DC, also known as 958 watts. The AC is blowing cold, frigid. I mean, guys, this is just this is just another element. This is just more proof that whatever you're doing, whatever you're considering, you should be considering us because we're gonna make whatever you throw at us possible. It's gonna be a great time. You're gonna get exactly what you want. I'm gonna kill this AC now. All right, and I just wanna prove one more thing here. So generator, by the way, there's a lot more flexibility in the Servo. Uh, 
We could do a auto start stop via a series of relays. Um, you have to account for the prime on the Odin uh, 4000 in order to do that. So the, the relays need to be DIN rail mounted and uh, this, that, and the other. Um, that is not part of this project. Similarly, uh, instead of always having our, push these cabinet drawers or cabinet uh, arms, brackets, whatever you want to call them in. Similarly, if we wanted to have our ventilation fans on uh, a thermostat, we could certainly do that with a simple temperature probe and another relay input to the servo. All that would, would be controlled here. Um, but let's just, uh, let's go ahead and finish up the demo here. So stop. We're going to do a 10 count to make sure the generator is primed. We're going to start it. Here she goes. So the factory transfer switch, I'm not going to show you guys this, but the factory transfer switch is underneath this that will uh, discern between uh, shore power and generator power. We left the factory transfer switch in place. The MultiPlus 3000 um, has a single AC in, dual AC outs. So uh, just something to keep in mind you know that's really the only way that i knew to do it if somebody has more advice or better advice maybe we didn't need the transfer switch maybe the uh maybe the multi plus could do it all on its own but this works for us so right now we are back to bulk charging right 28 and a half amps 40 amps 50 amps Fresh fluid changes, four by four, lithium battery conversion, all the factory bullshit accounted for, resolved, and a turnkey adventure vehicle delivered to you. Perfect every single time. Guys, this is Josh at Peak Pounder. I want y'all to go camping. Even if you don't go camping with us, you need to get out there. The weather's great. This is my time of year for camping. Hey, by the way, with the giveaway. If you've watched this long, you deserve a spare tire carrier. Uh, so in the previous video, there's something that I'm trying to consider my audience here. Uh, I guess you would, you would call it, uh, you would say maybe Cartman from South Park, uh, or if you're an old head, you know, Dennis the Menace. Um, who else, who else, who else? Oh, Dracoy Malfoy, have I covered? Have I covered a bunch of genres here or a bunch of generations? I think I have. I'm looking for... Oh, I'm looking for the carrier now. I don't know what the hell I did with it. Here's the box. Anyway, Draco Malfoy from Harry Potter. Dennis the Menace from Dennis the Menace. Uh, Cartman from South Park. They all have something in common. And it's something that was in the last video. Something, somebody like that is called. If you can tell me what that something is... Here's a hint. Look for something orange. First one to do that gets the carrier. I'll ship it to you. Free of charge. No strings attached. I just need to get the damn thing out of here. Guys, it's Josh at Peak Pounder. It's been a great time with this one. I hate, I hate to see it go, but I love to watch it leave. Let's go camping. Peak Pounder.